Can only answer for myself. Praise God. We bless the Lord for being in the house of God this morning. He blessed each other with well, a life, health, and strength that we could come to the house of God. Because there are many that did not wake up this morning. All across the land. Then there are some that woke up but could not get up. But God spared us and allowed us to come to the house of God with our right mind. And that's enough to give him the praise, the glory, and the honor. Hallelujah. We thank him. We cannot take life for granted. Because one moment is not promised. But we're here. And because we are created out his image, he loved for us to give him the praise, the glory, and the honor. For we was created for his pleasure and not the other way around. Amen. I thank God for all that's here, all that's on the airways, listening um, online. God can be right there is if you yield to him right where you are. Amen. Praise God. And I appreciate having my family in the house this morning. A very pleasant surprise. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for them journeying this away. Amen. We're going to get right into the word of God and those that have your Bibles. And if you're able to stand, we ask that you would stand for the reading of the word. And we're going to a very familiar passage of scripture, Matthew very sick, verse, uh, chapter 6, beginning at verse 5. And we will be reading from the New King James Version, Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 5. And it reads, and when you pray. You shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their own reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in secret, in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our father in heaven hallowed be thy name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen for if you forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive men their trespasses neither will your father forgive your trespasses let us pray father in the precious name of jesus lord we bless you and we thank you for this appointed time to declare your word father we speak that your word would go forth unhindered that the word will fall on good soil and that it will take root and bring forth the fruit that you desire in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we say have thine way. Do what you will as you will. For I yield myself to your father that you might be glorified in this house in the mighty name of Jesus. For your word has free course. Your spirit has free course. Hallelujah. That you may accomplish all that you desire in jesus mighty name we declare it to be so amen you may be seated amen praise god and as i was uh meditating and doing devotionals uh throughout this week this particular passage of scripture came up a very familiar and some people call this model prayer the lord's prayer and when you really think about it and look and read the words of it, it's a model 
for us to follow, but not the Lord's prayer. Because if you notice part of what's in the scripture, it says if uh, that we pray for our forgiveness, praise God. God don't need no forgiveness. He's not sin. He's not done anything. It's us that needs forgiven. Praise God. It's us that's trespassed. And he says that as we ask him to forgive us of our trespasses or forgive us of our sins, praise God, that he would do it. Praise God. And and I share this and I feel like the Lord brought this back up because I think we have preached on this some time ago about the importance of prayer. And that is what I want to use for a topic, the importance of prayer. Now, some of your Bibles may label this as the model prayer. And that's what it is, is a model prayer. The first portion of this prayer deals with God himself and giving reverence to his name. The middle part has to do with us, and then it closes back out when we reverence back to the Lord for who he is. Amen. So it's broken down into three different parts. Praise God. But this is a model and a model is something that you can follow as an example. Praise God. And I like, you know, over in uh, Luke 11, 1, the scripture says the disciples went to Jesus and they said, will you teach us how to pray? They didn't ask Jesus, will you teach me how to preach? Will you teach me how to heal? Will you teach me how to do miracles? But they said, will you teach me or teach us how to pray? That's how important prayer was. You got to remember the disciples was with Jesus and they saw him doing all the miracles and doing different things and the healings and all of that was taking place. And they heard him pray. But the thing that they recognized was that when Jesus prayed, things happened. And whatever he prayed, that happened. So they were saying to Jesus, if you can just teach us how to pray so that things can happen when we pray, praise God, that's what we need. That's how important prayer is. Now, when you look at the word prayer from a biblical perspective, prayer is a relational type relationship prayer is relational that's our relational communication to God now when you think about it verse um where it starts out in verse 9 he says in this manner therefore pray our father in heaven so when you think of our father that's talking about a relationship it's basing this model off of the father son relationship and so what this is reminding us is if we're going to communicate with God, we need to have relationship with him. And anybody knows that if you got a relationship with anybody, it requires communication. Now, communication is not a dialogue, a monologue, but it's a dialogue. It's me talking. It's you talking. And we are exchanging conversation with each other that's communication and to be able to understand what each other is saying that's real communication see you got a lot of folk talking but don't nobody know what they're talking about that's not communication that's not relationship and we've got a lot of folk because you got to understand something most of everybody in here was taught this prayer from your childhood up. And if I'd have told you I was going to talk about the Lord's Prayer, most of you wouldn't even need to turn to the scripture because you already know what it says. You can quote it. And we've been quoting it from a child up, not really understanding the implication of what this prayer really was saying. What God is trying to work with the body of Christ is to get us to understand that it's not just about getting something done. It's not just about repeating words, but it's about understanding what we're saying and how to put that into practice 
Because as believers, we're being called to walk by faith and not by sight. And so it starts out, it says, our father in heaven, hallowed would be your name. We that belong to the Lord, we that are believers and have accepted his salvation. There should be a relationship started that we begin to cultivate with one another. Now, to break this on down in our local understanding. When there is a relationship, that means you are trying to pursue the other individual. You're trying to get them interested in you as much as you are interested in them. And so when we accept the Lord as our Lord and our Savior, praise God, we became connected to the family of God. And not just to the family of God, but now we are connected to Jesus himself and we have access to the Father through the Son, Jesus. And now what we want to do is since we are part of that family is to begin to build that relationship so that there can be exchange of conversation. Not just me going in telling God what I want, what I need, because he already know what I want. He knows what I need because the Bible says he knows our thoughts and he also knows the intent of our heart. So it's not just about your words. You might disguise and you might fool man, but you won't fool God. Because he not only do he know what you're going to say, but he also know the intentions behind what you spoke. Praise God. So as we begin to give God a reverence, this is saying that as we begin our prayer, praise God, he told them as he was teaching and then he gave them this model. He says that when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. See, the word hypo hypocrite, you know, came back in the Greek meaning back in the day is if you looked at some old movies, praise God, before they got all sophisticated with a lot of this technology stuff, praise God, one actor could play several parts. And when that actor had to do a certain part, praise God, he would have a mask on a stick and then he would hold that mask up to his face based on what part he was playing. Now when that same actor needed to do another part, he would take that mask, lay it down and pick up the next mask and put it on because now he playing a different part. That's hypocrite. In other words, because it's pursuing to look one way when they really somebody else. Because you got one person playing several roles. So they change the role as they need. Hate to say it, but you know, we got a lot of church folk that come to church with the mask on. They walk in the church, quoting all the scriptures, singing all the songs, and looking the part. But when they walk out of the church and get with the friends, or wherever they're going, they're a whole nother person. The name Jesus ain't even coming up because they want to fit in with the group that they are with. Time to take those masks off because Jesus said, don't be like the hypocrite. Don't be out there trying to pray and say fancy words and do a lot of repetition because we really not praying to God. When you're doing all of that, you praying to man. You call yourself praying to God, but you're talking so that man will appreciate what you're saying because when you're praying in public you're going to say what's acceptable to the crowd but what he told them disciples was he says I need you to go into your room some translation says go into the closet and close the door why did he want you to go into the room or go into the closet and he said close the door so it's nobody but you and God because, see, when you in public, you ain't about to stand up there in front of all them folk and confess and, and pray about, Lord, I need you to forgive me for this. I need you to forgive me for that. But, see, when you are praying in secret in your closet with the door closed where nobody's hearing what you're saying, then you and Jesus can get down to the real nitty gritty. You can talk to them. 
because he already know all that's going on. He also know what we're thinking and what our intentions are. So when it's just me and God, we can just be real. We can say, God, I know I messed up. I know that I shouldn't have, but I did. And I'm asking you right now, according to your word, to forgive me and to cleanse me from all that unrighteousness. See, I can talk to God like that. I'm by myself. But if you get up there in public, you ain't about to say all that because you don't want nobody to know you messed up. But I want you to understand something. If you're walking, living, and breathing, everybody steps up out of line sometimes. Whether you want to or not, you're going to cross the line because somebody going to make you go back to the old you. Because they're going to get on your nerves and you're going to say something. You'll feel sorry after you say it, but it's already out. And then you have to remind yourself, Lord, have mercy. I thought that was gone. But see, they touched that nerve, which brought it right back up. God created the most complex computer system that ever was. That's this human body. Things that been lying dormant for years can pop up at a moment's notice if the right button has been pushed. But what God is teaching here is use this as a model. Give him the honor and the reverence that's due his name. And then after we honor and recognize who he is, then we can begin to pray, give us our daily bread. So then we can begin to talk to him and let him know, Father, this is what I'm in need of. Because I don't give your name the glory and the honor that was due you. And you know, I like um, verse 10 there. It says, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth. We here on earth, but it says, as it is in heaven. Now, you know, and I know what's happening here on earth ain't happening in heaven. Too much mess going on here in the earth. Ain't no mess going on in heaven. But that's why we're praying that his will be done. So we as believers, we are called to let the will of God be done down here on earth. That's why prayer is a relational ship type situation. Because if I got a relationship with you, that means you know me, I know you, and we can be real with each other. Because we're going to be real with each other without trying to judge each other, recognizing that you can encourage me and I can encourage you. And we both can grow together. Praise God. That's what relational is all about. And see, God says that when we acknowledge our sin or our trespasses, then he says, I will forgive you as you forgive others. But see, when we come real, God is real with us and he's going to forgive us. So we want to get into the habit of not praying just because I suppose to pray. We want to pray because of the relationship. Because we want to communicate with God. And when we go into our closet or that room and close the door, when it's just me and God, that is symbolizing the quiet place, the stillness. Because when we begin to talk to the Lord, then he wants us to stay there so he can speak back to us. Now, God may or he may not speak audibly to you. But our bodies, we made up of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. And because our spirit is where God is actually residing, when we are in prayer and we stop and meditate and just be quiet after we have given God his reverence that's due his name and acknowledged him and got him in his proper perspective, then God can begin to minister to our spirit. And what will happen is as he begin to speak to our spirit, God's thoughts is being translated or transferred to our spirit. And then as we're there listening and waiting in that silence without the destructions, without all the interruptions and that outside force hindering us from hearing, we now in our spirit sense 
what God is trying to show us and what he's trying to tell us. Because then our thoughts will become active. And that's because the spirit of God has sent those thoughts to our spirit. And that that we was waiting on God to show us, now ideas start coming up on how we can implement it and begin to make that work and move towards what God has spoke to our spirit. Because when it goes to our spirit, then the spirit is going to communicate it to our mind. And our mind is made up of our emotions and our will. But as the spirit is speaking to our mind, praise God, that begins to change the way we were thinking. It begins to change our outset because now we're hearing from the spirit of God instead of hearing from what people have told us. People mean well, and they tell you a lot of good things. Like I said, our parents, our grandparents, our families, they instill certain values and they put things into us as a child with great intentions. But everything that has been given and done was not always in line with what the word of God was saying. But it was good stuff. And it helped you become a good person, but it doesn't help you get through some of the battles that you're dealing with right now. And God is teaching the disciples here on how to pray and that if they pray from a relational standpoint, he can take care of what needs to be taken care of and he will gladly do it. Because Jeremiah tells us that God is waiting to perform his word. He wants to perform his word. But he needs us to line up so he can perform that word in us. And then they said, give us this day our daily bread. We, it's okay to plan and do all of that. But they asked for the daily bread. What he was saying is, tomorrow got enough issues of its own. Let's just deal with the day. God give me what I need for the day. Make my provisions for the day because tomorrow you will take care of tomorrow when tomorrow gets here. Because we don't even know if we're going to see tomorrow. So we need to be satisfied and say God give us our daily bread. And then forgive us our debts. And some of your translation says forgive our transpassion. Some says forgive us our sins. Praise God. We're getting clean so that we are ready and right. And it says as we forgive the others as well. Those that are wrong us. Now that's very important. Because the scripture reminded us. That if we expect God to forgive us, we better forgive others. Because he says, that if you don't forgive them, I'm not going to forgive you. And if he don't forgive us, where we think we're going? Praise God. So it's very important to understand that forgiving is not just about who was right and who was wrong. But it's about us keeping ourselves in the proper perspective and position so that God can do for us what he planned to do. Praise God. And it says, don't lead us into temptation. But you know what? God is not going to put you in the temptation directly. But because he wants to spend some time with us, sometimes when things are going well, Real good. You ain't thinking about God. You enjoying the good time. Going on. Doing all you need to do. Putting your plans and all of that in order. So God says. Wait a minute. If we supposed to have a relationship. I got to have some time with you. Because you think about your relationships here on earth. Your natural relationships. If you don't spend time with the person that. Y'all supposed to be close and friends or spouse or whatever. 
they gonna feel like, well, you don't care nothing about me. You're only being nice to me when you want something. And that's about the way the church is sometimes with God. Now, when there is a need, oh, they can't pray hard enough, long enough. But when everything is good, child, I'll be praying with y'all. Y'all go on. Because I'm not, right now, I got this to do and that to do. But when the need hits you, oh, you ready to pray, and then you want everybody else to drop what they're doing and pray right then and there. It's now an emergency because it's you. So God will allow circumstances to come our way just so he can have some time with us. Since we won't give him the time, he says, well, second, if I let this situation come their way and they got a little tough financial spot or they got a health issue, they're going to call on me then. They're going to pray and get in my word then. They're going to read my scripture and quote the scripture then because they're trying to get that need met that I allowed to go so I could have that time. So when we understand prayer, we want to go ahead on and be praying without God having to create the circumstances to cause us to pray. Because if we belong to him and there's a relationship, that communication should be ongoing. All the time. Praise God. And so as they begin to say, but deliver us from the evil one, it says yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. It says yours is the kingdom, which indicates that there is a king. And the king decrees a thing, and it is so. God has spoken his word, and it is so. And so we as believers need to understand the importance of prayer. Praise God, because God is not just interested in that temporary hookup. And as we look back through the word, Joshua 9 and 14, it says that the people made their plans without God. When you got plans, God needs to be included. And because they did not include God, there was a chaos going on. And they ended up in trouble with their enemy. We must always communicate with God. That's why it's relational. Praise God. And I cannot stress the relational enough because that's how important it is. And since prayer is a biblical relation communicating with God, there are times in our life because of the nature of God Prayer can change God's mind about what he was going to do. Now, the word tells us that God is the same today, same yesterday, today and forever. God's character does not change, but he can change his mind concerning us when we are communicating with him. Now, God is a God of justice as well. So a good example would be is I model sin. And then I went to God and I said, God, forgive me of this sin. And God forgives me. But that sin may have called for God to issue a certain judgment based on that sin. But because I talked to my father, praise God. And I got that relationship with him when I began to pray and said, God, will you forgive me? God recognized that my heart has changed. My heart has turned. And instead of giving me what was due me, he may give me a lesser route on it. But because he's a God of justice, we will face some consequence for the sin. But it may not be what it could have been. Because we see in the word of God where saints had prayed before and God changed his mind. Praise God. They were uh, calling on the Lord because he was about to run the judgment. Think over in Amos 7. Praise God. And as the people cried out to him, praise God, God began to change the judgment that he was about to sin. Because as they began to cry out, their hearts was changing and turning towards God. And instead of sending that judgment, he sent mercy. 
Because God is a merciful God. See, prayer is very important. And what God is trying to get us to understand, it is our dialogue with him. Just like he walked with Adam and Eve in the garden, praise God, before they got tricked by the enemy or the serpent, praise God, and went against what God says. The word says they used to walk and talk, commune with God in the cool of the day. God is looking for that same kind of relationship, praise God, with the saints today. And God's saying that if we pray in private and if we pray in secret, praise God, but he will reward us openly. If you ain't praying in secret and trying to pray in public, you ain't going nowhere. Because you need to be prayed in secret before you try to pray out publicly. Amen. Praise God. And see, prayer being that communication with God, we're not informing God of what we need and all of that. God already knows. And you say, well, if he already knows, then why I need to tell him? Because that is the mechanism that he put in place for us to commune with God because we don't see him now in this position face to face like we will when he comes back and set his reign up here on the new heaven and the new earth. Amen. When he reign and be ruling from Jerusalem, when he'll be physically present and ruling from Jerusalem when the new heaven is come down on the new earth. Praise God. Amen. And so we need to keep that in mind. And as we are praying to God, there are certain things God going to do regardless of what we're going to do because he is God. Now, that's what we call an unconditional will of God. He's the said he's going to do it and he's going to do it because he's not a man that he should lie. But then there's the conditional will that God has where some things is based on what we do. He has asked us to pray to him. And if we don't pray, some of the things he would do, he's not doing because we ain't asking. We didn't line up with the condition. Now, understand everything that I've talked to you about. When you have that relationship and you've accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior, you are prepared and ready to go to heaven. But what God is helping us understand is that prayer can bring some heaven down here on earth. But without prayer, you'll get through here and you're going to heaven. See, when we accept God and put our trust in Accept the Lord and put our trust in him according to the word. We are saved and we're going to heaven. It's just that heaven won't be enjoyed down here unless we are obeying and putting this word into practice. Because God is waiting to perform his word. But he cannot perform the word if we won't line up with the word. Because God is not going against his word because he and his word, they are one. As much as he wants to. He's saying, Lord, if they just get it right, if they just speak my word and declare it, I can release the angels so they can go to work. Because the Bible says when he left here, after he paid the price for our salvation, he went up to the father and seated on the right hand of God, the father. But the word also said that we are seated with him in heavenly places. That's a spiritual connection. Because his spirit resides in us, we're seated in heavenly places. So that gives us access to God the Father through his son Jesus. And that's why he says, if you pray, I can hear it. But he wants the prayer based on relationship. Build a relationship and get out of the habit. Of just doing something because it's a habit with no meaning, no thought. That's why he said, I don't need those repetitions, something sounding good and all of that, but I need it to be the real deal. Talk to me like you're going to talk to your friend, face to face, real deal, because you understand we got a relationship. We're not judging each other. We're helping each other because we both need help 
to move on up. And when we talk to God, we belong to him. That's okay to be real because we're not perfect down here on earth. And perfect, according to the Bible, is maturity. And the only way we're going to mature in Christ is walk out this word. So as we look at this model prayer, it's teaching us how to pray in general. Make sure we reverence God and give him the glory and the honor that's due his name. And then we get real with him and ask for our forgiveness and all. And as we have already forgiven others, and then we close it out and saying that your kingdom will come and your will will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. In other words, we want to pray because we need some of heaven down here on earth. With everything that we are faced with and we are dealing with, we need God to come down here and be with us. And Matthew 7 and 7 says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive, and he who seeks, find. And to him who knocks, it will be open. And then he asked the question, he said, now what man is there among you that if his son, praise God, asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a serpent? He says, if we being evil, praise God, know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more does our father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask? Now, when you look at that passage and it says that if a son asks for uh, bread, the Lord not going to give him stones. But you got to understand when this was written, this is referencing over in Israel. In Israel, when they bake bread, it's round like a stone. And the bread is brown when it's baked. The stones in Israel are round and brown. And so if you look at a bread, loaf of bread, and you look at the stone, they look very similar. So if he picked up the stone because the son asked for bread, it looked alike. So he would think that he was getting bread. But it says our father's not trying to trick us. You see, the devil speaks to your mind sometimes and make you think that God is not doing this and God is not doing that. But the Lord want us to understand that when we begin to treat him like a daddy instead of treating him like a foreigner and begin to let that re uh, relationship be cultivated, there is not anything that he would do for us or withhold from us no good thing. That's what the word says. He won't withhold no good thing for those that are his. But what we've got to do is because we're here on earth having to fight through this spiritual darkness that's trying to reign here on earth, we got to communicate in with God through prayer, through the spirit. So that the spirit can help us navigate as we go through life. And God said to them, he says, not only if the son um, would ask for a fish, he's not going to give him no serpent and make it look like fish meat. No, nah, if he asks for fish, he's going to get fish. Praise God. And he says, so if we can give good gifts, our Heavenly Father is able to give much greater gifts. And you know, the Holy Spirit, when we're beginning to pray with God, and the Holy Spirit begin to send God's thoughts to our spirit so that we'll know the next move. See, it's just like that, that uh, GPS system that we got in place. The GPS system is on our phones or on our, in our dashboard on the car. It's sitting there waiting for us to put in the destination. And when we begin to pray, God is waiting on our prayers to come up to him so he can dispatch the angels to begin to work on our behalf. Because the word says that the angels hearken to the word of God. They're not moving unto God sends that word and dispatch that word. But when that word goes forth, the angels is out there making it happen. Because they are honoring and moving at the word of God. And so the Holy Spirit is sort of like a delivery uh, service to God. Amen. Because it gets the job done. That's how he works in this realm. Praise God. 
through his spirit, but we got to have that relationship. We've got to understand the importance of prayer. And you know what? When you sit down and you think about it, because there's an unconditional will and a conditional will, and you get to heaven and you see the storage or whatever, praise God, and you look in that conditional, all of the stuff that God wanted to do, but we didn't ask and we didn't line up, you're going to say, you're going to just be in all shake your head. This was with me. And it's all because I didn't do what I need to do. And there are sometimes when it's very specific, what God tells you his will is in the word. But there's other times when it's not specific, whether it's his will or not, and you're not sure. So what you want to do is obey and declare that word. And let God do what he's going to do. We don't want to assume that this is conditional or this is unconditional. But what we want to do is take the word. And as God shows us that word, is begin to try to implement that word. And as we begin to implement the word, whether it's conditional or whether it's unconditional, we'll see things begin to change. You see, as the song said, you know, they were singing here earlier. Praise God. Steal away. Hallelujah. Go down on your knees. Praise God. But whether you're on your knees or whether you're standing and walking, but you're talking to the Father. Praise God. And as you begin to let your request be made known before him, the Spirit of God can begin to move. That's why prayer is so important. And the devil don't want the body to have a prayer life because, see, he knows that if you get to communicating with God, God going to cause things to turn around because the devil may have been holding you hostage. Praise God. The devil may have been sending this and sending that and speaking to your mind and saying, that ain't going to happen because it's been so long. But see, when you begin to call on our Father and say, hallowed be thy name, God, I thank you that you're giving me my daily bread and that your will be done in earth as it is in heaven, then we'll remember that in heaven there is no sickness. In heaven there is no death. There is no light because my God is not broke. Praise God. He can meet every need in here and not even tap the bank account. Praise God because the bank of heaven got more than enough for everybody. But God is waiting for the same to communicate through prayer with him but by building that relationship and when you got that relationship it ain't nothing that he's going to withhold from the saints of God when they are walking in line with his word praise God because it's just like that in the natural but God is saying you got to get in secret so you can get real before God and when you get real before God he's not mad at because he's already paid the price for your mess ups long ago. Praise God because he shed his own blood and the word of God says that it only had to be shed one time. It was not like an animal where the priest had to go in year after year and make atonement for the sins of the people of God. But when Jesus Christ followed the instructions of his father and came here and died hung up on that cross and died but three days later he got up and rose again it said that his blood only needed to be shed once so our account has been credited with righteousness praise god and god put prayer as a mechanism for us to get in touch with him and when we say forgive us and cleanse us his blood is already on the account. So when God sees us, he sees his son, Jesus. And Jesus is sitting up in heaven making intercession for the saints of God. And just as the disciples says, teach us how to pray, Lord. And because they knew that when Jesus prayed, things happened. But every time you heard Jesus pray, he said, Father, praise God. And that's because of the relationship with the Father and the 
son. The only time in the Bible that you heard God pray and did not say father was when he was at that cross and he was giving up his uh, the last breath. He says, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? But nevertheless, not my will, but your will. The reason God, Jesus had to say, my God, my God, because he had our sins upon him at that time. And sin will separate us from God. Praise God. And because he had our sins that he was getting ready to free us, he had to say, my God, my God, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. And then the world said, he hung his head and he gave up the ghost. If they didn't kill him, he gave up the ghost. But three days later, he got up. And when he got back up, he was restored back in position. And he went to the Father. And the word says he's in heaven making intercession for us. Don't you know if Jesus is praying for you, the devil can't stop you. Why are you buying the lie that he's speaking to you? The word didn't say we wouldn't go through anything. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but I deliver you out of them all. We were delivered before we ever got in it. But if you don't know it and declare it, you won't be able to walk in it. But it's yours. We're not denying that this is not happening and this is not going on, but we are denying it the right to exist. And God say, pray and change. My tongue is as the pen of a ready writer. Let me write out the story. The writer, the author, and the finisher of our faith. The author gets to write the story for the book that he's writing. That's why we can't be playing religious with the word of God. For this word is life and spirit. The sword of the spirit. Cut between the spirit, the soul, and even the marrow of the bone. We got to use the word. This is no ordinary textbook. Life and spirit. It's the living word. And Jesus and his word, they are one. The importance of prayer. Don't let the devil trick you and think that it's not working. First Peter 2 and 24, it says, by his stripes, ye were healed. W-E-R-E, -E, past tense. Not will be, but were. Now what you waited on is the manifestation in the natural. That's why you hear me so many times when we come to the house of God. I said, don't act like you don't need anything. Go ahead on and praise him because we was created after his image. And the word says, let everything that hath the breath praise ye the Lord. You might can't run around the building, but you can wave your hand. You can speak a kind word. You can put a smile on your face. But the deal is, I got to know who I am in Jesus Christ. And if I know who I am, I got to act like I know who I am. Because the devil will get up in your face and make you feel like you might well sit down somewhere. There ain't nothing happening. But the word says, walk by faith and not by sight. Then I have to turn around and tell the devil, it is written that I walk by faith and not by sight. I don't have to see it. All I need to know is God said it. And if he said it, it is so. And matter of fact, you the father of lies, so get them lies from me. I don't need to hear your lies. I'm not going to accept your lies. See, when the devil starts whispering to your mind, and then you look at your situation 
He's pulling you away from what the Spirit of God has already spoken in His Word. And then you say, well, yeah, this is happening and that's happening. God didn't say it won't happen. We won't exempt. But He is our deliverer. The choir sung the song. See, every time they sang that song, I know sometimes y'all say, Pastor, just so excited. No, I'm moving in faith. Because I don't always feel it either. But the word says, you are my savior. You are my healer. You are my deliverer. Somebody ought to fit in one of those three categories. If you belong to the Lord, then he's your savior. If you got an illness going on in your body, then he's your healer. And when the song says he's my healer, I need to open my mouth and say, you are my healer. And if I'm trapped, I need to say, you are my deliverer. The devil might back me in the corner, but you my deliverer. Release me so I can come out. Let everything that has the breath pray ye the Lord. Hallelujah. That's how we walk by faith. We declare the word in spite of what we see. In spite of what we feel, we declare the word and we stand upon the word. Then the Spirit of God will do what he's going to do. Lord have mercy, I'm so glad the song said I can't answer for nobody else. I got to answer for myself. But see, when we're in the house of God, gathered together, the word says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. And if he's in the midst, he's able to begin to minister to the need. But I got to connect. And when I connect, the Spirit of God will begin to move. Thank the importance of prayer. Don't be fooled and don't forget it. Prayer is our biblical relationship communicating with God. That's the mechanism he put in place. All this religious stuff, you better throw it out the window. You still might get to heaven, but you won't enjoy heaven here on earth. As much as God wanted to be done. That model prayer says we need to pray his will on earth as it is in heaven. Ain't no mess going on in heaven. But we got to bring it down here. And prayer is what's going to bring it from the heavens into the earth. Prayer is what's going to turn your situation around. Because when we're praying, we're speaking God's word. Not some repetition, not some rhyme. But we are praying from a relationship standpoint. Because in the natural, when you got a relationship, a real relationship, there's nothing that that friend won't do that's in their power to get done. Because of the relationship. And if a friend in the natural, how much more would our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, move? on behalf of one of his children because that brings the glory to his name that lets earth see that heaven is still room in the book of Daniel praise God it says that heaven rules heaven rules we are just temporary pilgrims passing through this land but our citizenship is in heaven with our father and if we just pilgrims passing through, this earth is not our permanent home. It's temporary. But our home is in heaven. We are ambassador, ambassadors on this earth representing heaven. So we represent heaven here on earth so that those that are outside the family can connect to the family of God. Because it's his desire that none perish and all will come into repentance. 
into everlasting life. We thank God for the word, and we're going to ask the choir as they come. And as the choir is coming, if there's someone outside of the family of God, we will give you the word because the word says it's by grace are you saved. Not by your word, but by grace. But we put our trust in Jesus and the work that he has done. The Bible says he will save us. Not based on how good we are. Not based on who we are. But based on the fact that we put our trust in him. By his grace, he has saved us. And it's all done by faith. And we are connected to the family of God. Praise God. If there is one, you make them. Praise God. Amen. And if not, we're getting ready to prepare to go into our altar prayer. Whether you come to the altar, whether you stand at your seat, whether you wave your hand, if you're not in a position to stand right now, Praise God. But whatever your point of contact, we're asking you to let your request be made known now as we as a body begin to pray for the individual need. Because God says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst. And if any two can agree as asking on any one thing, that he will do that his Father in heaven might be glorified. So you may let your request be made known at this time. Tawana Head. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Mother Lily Carter Wilfrid. Miss Johnny Walker. Praise God. Praise God. See, when we ask for the request, praise God. It's not form or fashion. God hears every request and does not get confused. But that's you exercising your faith by declaring that request. Whether it's for you or whether it's for somebody else. God hears all of the requests at the same time. Thank you, God. And we're going to pray according to his word. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we appreciate you for who you are. We're grateful for all that you do, but who you are makes your word that right by yourself. So we just want to bless your name and give you all the honor that do your name. Father, we your children, Lord. We have let the request go before you. For your word have declared to let our request be made known unto you. Yes. And Father, as those requests have been spoken, God, we release those requests unto you and that your will be done. Each and every request, Father, we pray that it will align with your will. And we release it that you might do what you will as you will in the mighty name of Jesus. We have been obedient by letting the request be made known. But because you are a God of eternity and we are a people of time, you see beyond what we can see. And so God, every request, you know what's best and you know your will. So that request is yielded according to your will. And because our trust is in you, Father, we agree and say, do what you will as you will for yet I'm yours and I thank you for being connected to the family and so God I trust you because you can see beyond what I can see that you will work that request as you so desire and for those God that are out due to ill minister to them right where they are but there is no distance between you and your spirit. God, we thank you for your spirit ministering to each and every soul right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, we appreciate all that you have done. All that you're yet doing and all that you're about to do. 
But Lord, we lift up those souls that have not yet yielded because it's your desire that none should perish, but that all would come into repentance, into everlasting life. God, we thank you for a mighty move of your spirit right now. Continue to keep our loved ones and our families covered, Father, while your spirit is yet drawing them nigh. For we declare that the enemy cannot have them. In the name of Jesus, for according to your word, me and my household, we all shall be saved. So we thank you, Father, for saving our household. And God, we base it on what your word and not what we see. Not what we hear, but what your word says, we stand upon. For your word will abide forever. It is as that rock. It will not go away. For it will stand through eternity. So God, we thank you for your healing mercy. God, we thank you for your delivering power. We thank you for your salvation. God, we thank you that the word is active and alive. And that it's doing what you sent it to do. And that you were waiting to perform your word. And we thank you now for accomplishing and doing that. That it will bring glory to your name, Father. We recognize that we are only vessels. And that you're yet working through us to let this world know that you are yet still on the throne and that heaven is still ruling regardless of what earth thinks regardless of what man thinks and what man does God you yet still have the final say and we look unto you as the author and the finisher of our faith we give thy name the praise, the glory, and the honor. And we declare it to be so according to thy word. In Jesus' mighty name, it is so. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to thy name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We appreciate the Lord for all that he is doing, and we are now 